Doodle Bud here, back at it again. Here we got the Pilot Custom 823. There are only a few pens that are out there where it seems we can get universal consensus and agreement that this is in fact a good pen. And the 823 is one of those standouts. I, it's, there's so few people that don't like this pen. I think everyone loves this pen, pretty much. And, you know, for a lot too, this is if the one pen they can only keep, you know, get rid of their whole collection and have to narrow it down to one. For a lot of people, it would be this pen. So it's a great pen, performs really well, pretty much universally loved. And the challenge with this is it's expensive. Uh, depending on where you buy it, your exchange rates, all that stuff, when you see this video, inflation, all the other things, uh, it can vary quite a bit. But ballpark in Canada, this would go for about 350 depending, again, where you buy it. You should be able to get it around that price range. I got it for under 300 so I got a bit of a deal. So it's a lot of money. You are getting gold. Uh, but for some, this is just going to be way out of the price range or would take a long time to save up for. So enter your clone ripoff copy tribute inspired by pen whatever you <laughs> enough air quotes whatever you want to call it so uh, maybe it's a badge of honor if your pen gets copied that's a badge of honor because it must be a good one so uh, here we are this is the wing song 699 obviously this is meant to be a replica of the 823 and i was curious what do you get what don't you get for the price difference 35 bucks 350 bucks obviously you're not getting gold but you know subtract subtract the gold price this is still way cheaper uh you know how close is it and you know again where, where i kind of want to find out where's the money like what what corners were cut to save the money to get a very similar looking and functioning pen for a, a tenth of the price so we're gonna go through that together show you the good show you the bad um, overall, if you can't stick through the video, it's pretty decent for the price point, not too shabby. Uh, but there are some little things, maybe five bucks more, and it would be a little bit better. But anyways, I'm going to rip them all apart, do a side-by-side. -side. You're going to learn about this one, learn about this one. We're going to show you the differences and see if we can find what you're giving up uh, when you're spending one-tenth the price. So let's get started. So first up, let's just do general looks. We'll buzz through this pretty quick. And we got the end caps here. You can see if we can zoom in right away. There's a little detail right there. So this is nicely polished and smooth. That's left over from the injection molding. That saves a little time and money. Obviously, this is gold trim. This is gold looking trim. I don't even think it's gold plated. Very smooth transitions here. If you can see, it has an edge. Let's get you in a little closer. So see that misalignment right there you can feel it and you'll see it's flush on one side not on the other so the parts don't go together quite concentrically so again it's a tiny detail but all these things start adding up we go down we got the the cap area here this looks fairly similar okay not overly different but again uh, see how this is flat here okay this is rounded out that's a it costs a bit more to do that, I'll tell you right now. Also, just the lettering too. How this is, is cut into the metal and put in there. I don't know if that's stamped or just exactly how they're doing it, but it is very crisp and very clean. This saves money doing your characters like this. And it also hides a lot of imperfections too. So anyways, again, not bashing it, but this is, this is just going to be an add-up of all the little things as well. Um... Let's go a little further along on the clip. So here we got a stamped clip. So this is stamped out of sheet metal. It's kind of squished and folded around. Much, much cheaper to make that versus this one here. We have this clip. It's much thicker metal and it looks like, I don't know, I don't know the process, but it almost looks like it's welded on there or something and then uh, smoothed around before it's all plated. Um, yeah, not 100% sure, but it looks kind of to me like it might be. Anyways. So again, the uh, imprint on there is nice and crisp and clear. And you can just see the difference on the imprint. Not as deep, not terrible, but again, just not the same quality. So we go up to the top. You know, again, for looks wise, they did a pretty damn good job. The plastic is not as dark. So this has more of an amber color. This is 
a little more transparent. Now, first things first, as soon as you pick it up, if you were blindfolded and were asked, pick up both pens, tell me which one is the good one, expensive, well-built, you can feel it instantly. So just the quality of the plastic isn't as good. And again, you just gotta, it's a little, it's a compounding effect, just reducing a couple costs here, there, there, here, there, it all adds up and then you can produce it for that lower price. Does it make it terrible? No, it actually functions quite well as a pen. I'm pretty pleased with it, but this all adds up. You can see the plating. So just see all the, the rippled edge on there as well. And even this edge, see how there's a little burr, like a little on that side from the stamping. You can see here, totally smooth out. That edge does not exist. So again, it's just finishing of the parts, how you're handling it and more steps, more steps, more refinement, more fine tuning, all adds up over time. Um, that's about it on this part. Let's uncap the pen. So we got one, two, two and a half. So the uh, 823, I think it's under two, one, one and three quarters. So that's not end of the world. It is kind of strange because these are injection molded. And if you're going to copy it, you could <laughs> just copy the same number of turns. That's a little bit odd. Um, let's have a look at the overall shapes of the pen. Obviously us steel nibs. So that's going to be a big money saver. Let's put the gold one right next to it. Uh, sections, you can see more uh, translucent, I guess we could say. The sections actually uh, looks like a touch longer on the 699. They have a little band. Uh, you can see immediately the quality of the threads. Let's zoom you in. You can just see how crunchy they are, a little misalignment. You can see the, the line here from the injection molding isn't polished, it runs along there. That does not exist on the 823. If you look on the profile of the threads here, a lot nicer, better depth, better uniformity, just not quite as close on there. And that has to do with the type of plastic they're using. You can only do so much with a lower grade plastic. We go along, you can see it's got that same step on there as well. Let's crack these pens apart now, take them apart and then look at the innards and the finer details. All right, so let's just go part by part. Let's do them all. So obviously the nib, let's start out, let's have a look. Um, you know, one is gold, one is gold plated. Fairly similar as far as profile. And uh, you can see the gaps a little bigger on the 823. Again, getting a beautiful gold nib. The imprinting on there is nice, nice and deep. You can do that with gold. Much more detail on the scroll work. Uh, it doesn't look terrible on the wing sung. It looks quite nice as well. But again, just not as premium. They do have that little notch on the bottom for fitting onto the feed. But you can see Pilot has this extra little step that they put into their nibs. Um, so that helps to locate on the feed, which is a nice little feature. You can do it on the wing sung as well. And then we got the feeds. Focus, there we go. So quite a big difference in feed design. You can just see right out of the gate the, uh, the ends here too, but this the thickness of this channel. The A23 has fantastic ink flow. You never have a problem. It's nice and juicy. I always am interested in you know, I'm going to be doing a video on this, so I guess I'm going to find out, but just the difference of having fewer fins with more room between them versus more fins with less room. Like, there's going to be a surface area calculation in there. Down at the bottom is where you start to see quite a bit. So on the feed here, um, there's just the channel where the ink comes in and that's it. And then there's a left over little nib here from the injection molding. So you're going to see a lot of these all over the pen. They just, you know, skip that step of refinement to save money. On the 823, of course, you're not going to see that anywhere whatsoever. It almost looks like two-piece. This reminds me of a Lamy 2000 uh, feed, and where now the ink sort of feeds into the middle of the feed and uh, kind of fills from inside out. So this thing just has fantastic ink flow. I, I can't, did I say nibs earlier? I meant to say feeds if I was getting my language mixed up, but you know what I'm talking about? We're looking at feeds. Here we are on the sections again. So they got that ring, but here on the 823, they have the O-ring for sealing here at the bottom, which is a proper design. It also is helps to retain this ring. So this thing isn't really loose. Maybe it's glued or just on there, but it can come loose. And if it comes loose, it falls off and could go down the sink. If you're washing here, it's not going to fall off. If it's loose, it's fine. So this is helping with sealing, but it also retains the part. So you're in the sink and you undo it. You don't lose your beautiful gold ring and start to cry. 
So smart thinking there. Again, there's another one of those little remnants from the injection molding and you can see the seam. You cannot see that anywhere on here. Just the level of polish. You feel it instantly, the plastic, especially when you're threading the pen on and off. Massive difference in feel. Let's look at the inside. So this is just straight board right through. This has another part that's fitted inside for proper uh, fitment. Again, all these things add up over time. Nibs and feeds go in uh, nice and easy. There's there's no uh, orientation. It just slips in there. So this is also this video might help you too for disassembling your pens. Uh, not that you always should be. The rule of thumb I go by is if it's very easy to take apart, you should be okay. Um, if it's very difficult or you have to have specialty tools, there's a reason and you shouldn't be taking it apart. So there's just a little tip. Um, here we go here, not overly different in profile. Nice little chamfer on there that is to engage that O-ring quite nice. Um, the ceiling on this one, so yeah, the ceiling's totally different here. This is going over top of it to seal. Um, not the proper way to seal on a gasket. That's a bit of a design. Yeah, that's, they really shouldn't have done that. It's much better. <laughs> you already have the thing to copy. Whether you put the groove here or there, I couldn't see that being a huge price difference, but that's not the proper way to seal an O-ring is have your threads go over top of the O-ring. You're just asking for the O-ring to get beat up over time. So that's one thing if you got this pen, maybe don't do that a bunch, but yeah, that's a bit of a design issue there. Versus here, the uh, it seals and compresses nicely. It's not going to uh, get chewed up because we've got a nice chamfer on there and we have a nice face and you can just feel it. Ah, there's that O-ring compressing here you really can't feel it. And honestly, if you look at that side profile, uh, that looks like a bit of a fail. Like we need that O-ring to be sticking out further than the threads and it's like the same. So that's a bit, you know, that's not a, that's not the best seal. So I haven't had this thing leak on me yet. I think it's a combination of the threads too, but that's a bit of a design flaw. So you're, that's what you're giving up on. That's surprising. If they're going to do this, just move it down. Like they, they had something to copy. So anyways, let's keep going on. For this one now, I'm going to take uh, the pen apart. I'm going to pop this off. And I do have this cool special little tool. I'll put links in the bottom for the 699, but also this little tool. This was on AliExpress. And it allows you to take this off. Now, again, you shouldn't be doing this. I'm doing this for the review. You don't need to take the uh the rods out and this caps off for regular usage of the pen but i thought let's do this since we're going to take this pen apart all right so here we got the caps on the back and you can see the difference just the quality of the design and the injection molding there down at the bottom of the bore versus inside the wing sung um, other than that they look fairly similar but again uh, on the back you get a nice smooth finish on the pilot we got this little remnant left over. Now this is really interesting. So these are the parts that fit inside and I am gonna to have to get out the microscope to show you just a real close look. Um, the profile on the shaft is fairly similar. There's a little more detail that goes into the 823. This, this little extra step actually gives a nice positive shunk when you drive it down all the way versus here as well. But here we got, I'm going to find out, I got to scratch this off. I'm curious what this material is, if it's plate. I don't know why that is shiny and plated like that. It doesn't look like stainless steel, but I'm going to, you know, sand it a little bit, see what we got underneath. But you can just see the overall finish of the part. So this is machine. So you can see this whole bit here, this is a machine part. So you can see those, those circular swirls there. Those are from an end mill that comes across and machines that flat. So those little swirl marks that kind of have go in this direction like that, that's an end mill coming across, buzzing off that flat. So you can see it's nice and square. They are totally opposite each other. The cut is flush and smooth. And you can even see on here, here's a chamfer, a nice little, they break that edge with a radius all the way around it on the top on there and a nice little radius chamfer down there. So this part is 100% made and machined themselves. It's got a nice thread to accept the rod on there. Uh, they do a good job. If we look at this one, so uh, maybe I gotta turn the flash, I'm getting some glare, there we go. 
So this flat, that is not machine. That looks like it's filed by hand. And we don't have a square surface. You can see that it's got an angle. This is the trapezoid. So there was more pressure on the bottom of the part when they filed it versus the top. It was at a slight angle. And hence, you can see here as well that it's raked backwards as well. So this one's kind of flat, but you can see it's off a bit. This is raked backwards. So there was unequal tool pressure on this side versus this side. But you can see all those file marks. You can see the burrs and there's no chamfer, no radius all the way around it on top or bottom. And now this, this is a dead giveaway. See this here, this little bit hanging off the end there. So how this part is made, this one is down here. This is fully machined. All this is done. This is just a standard size piece of tubing they have. They drill a hole in and they tap it. And then the, the part, you know where it is here, it's parted off. So this is just a long rod. They drill a hole, they tap it, and it's parted off really quick. And you can see, because this is the burr left from the parting tool right there. That's the burr. And they don't bother to remove it. Again, this is all just to save money. It compounds and adds up. This part, this is made the least cost method versus in the background here that's all fuzzy because you're so zoomed in. That is properly machined. So this part actually saved a lot of money. The burrs on there, they don't care to remove it and they just buzz it. Maybe that might even be a belt sander. You know what? Uh, for speed, that's how you would do it. Just a belt sander, just bzz, 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 hit the part uh, with some coarse grit paper and then you just plate it to hide all the nasty work that you just did. So that's how that's made. It's just a standard piece of tubing. Drill a hole, tap it part it off, leave the burr on there, blast it on the belt sander, and you go through these parts super quick and good enough to fit in. Uh, the rest of it's not too bad. That threads in, and, you know, there's that little slot there to accept this guy here, you know, the, uh, the rod on there, too. You can use that tool. You can just see the fit and finish as well. So what I'm going to do really quick is I'm just going to get some sandpaper or a file just to remove some of this to see what material that is. So back from the garage there really quick, I took a file to it, and lo and behold, it's brass. So it's the same material as on... I didn't get rid of the burr. That is a uh, piece of crime scene evidence. Don't touch it. Leave it there. We all need to see it. Um, so it, the only reason you would, cr you would chrome plate the brass, because this is way deep up in the cap, you're not going to have issues with corrosion and all this stuff. The reason you do that is to hide, uh, tooling marks. I know it still doesn't hide it because they're so deep and scarring, but you hide, you know, a little bit of a lackluster work job and you're going to have to do this. Like I said, they made this part way cheaper than this part and to top it off, to make it look kind of still sort of skookum. Uh, they throw some chrome on there to impress us. But uh, I saw what you did. So let's get down to a little bit more here. So last part we're going to talk about is um, the piston filler, this little section here. Now, I'm not going to actually take it out. The seals look kind of similar. You can see the gaskets. I'm sure there's differences, but I can't really get to it in the 699. As you can see on the 823, they have a flat. Now you're not so really supposed to remove it, but you can. And the reason they put a flat on here is it's a premium plastic. Now they do say it voids the war warranty because if you just wrench it back on, they're way too tight. You can put stress cracks and shatter it. So they're like, that's your own doing. Don't touch it. But obviously you, uh, you can open it up. They put a flat on there because they have a little bit of confidence if you're not a moron. But on here, there isn't one. There's no flat. And you go, oh, I wonder why that is. Because they know if you take this thing in and out, you're probably going to crack it. It is an inferior plastic. So again, like I said earlier, if they don't want you to open something, don't open it. There's a reason. So in this one, again, I, I take my on and, on and off. I know about proper tightening and pressure and what something feels like and not over torquing it and cracking it. But on here, they're like, no, even if you're good at that, don't do it. Um, there's just too much of a risk on the this plastic here and, and the threads going. So they're just saying flat out, do not take this out. So I'm not going to take it out. But I thought I'd just give you one last little observation. Um, of course, just from the overall feel, the A23 does feel premium and it better for the price. But something as simple as capping, uh, sorry, posting the pen, it just doesn't quite fit on there secure. It doesn't go, it just it catches. It almost seems like something's catching on the step 
on the inside. They should have just checked that a little bit more before they kind of signed off on the final, you know, design and uh, drawings for the injection molding. Um, it's just not quite as secure. It doesn't go as deep and a little bit wiggly. And so with the 823, it just goes on be lovely, just shunk on there deeper and it's 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 on there nothing catches so what happens is the uh, the wing song is a little bit longer and if we can show you here turn this here we are the wing song is a little bit longer when you cap it and actually it doesn't seem like much but it's enough that when i hold it i actually find it does back weight a little bit too much so the eight the uh, sorry the 699 i don't post it the 823 when i write I do post it. It just feels more secure and doesn't throw the balance off. But that's one other small little detail, not fatal, but let's ink them up. I couldn't say no to the opportunity to measure the ink volume difference between the two. Let's see what we got. When you know it, we're pretty much bang on. I mean, within the accuracy of the scale and me rounding a little bit here and there. So 1.8 grams or so about 1.8 mils, uh, you know, of ink in each pen. That's pretty, pretty damn tight. So I can't believe I forgot to mention this right out of the start, but a huge cost savings for Wingsung was R&D. Pilot did it all. They got to buy one, reverse engineer it, and sort of copy it. But through the R&D, there's a few things they missed, like how that gasket should be sitting. So you get what you pay for sometimes. So this is where it all matters at the end of the day, is putting pen to paper. And I gotta say, this pen is pretty decent for an extra fine a steel nib at this price point they're you know they're not getting tuned before they leave the factory it's pretty darn good a little bit you know toothy but again it's extra fine so what can you expect um again for my style the, the fine i thought it would be a bit finer and for me it's the flow is 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 wet which is okay it, i guess it was just not 100 percent what i was expecting i've learned to use it i use it for a different purpose than i originally got it for which is okay but now i actually the reason i kind of wanted to get this vac filler was to try it out but to get a, you know essentially the same pen in the nib point that i was sort of expecting so i wanted a pen to do paperwork with that was nice and fine looked classy lots of ink i could see how much ink is left in the pen so i know what i got the shutoff valve is nice, so I don't have to worry about it running out. And if I, you know, if it runs low, I just crack that for a second and then I'm good to go. So that was the original intention of the pen. I use it for different reasons now. So I thought, well, if I'm going to order the, uh, you know, the knockoff pen, might as well get what I wanted it for. And I actually have been using it at my work uh, on filling out paperwork and documents where I need a fine point, not overly wet. And I got to say, I'm very very happy with it actually i just did business the other day with a client using this exact pen and it performed exactly how i wanted it to so my closing thoughts on the wingsung 699 i think it's actually a pretty decent pen i understand for one tenth the price you're not going to get even half the quality but the end goal of having a pen that looks sharp a uh, cool filling system, all the things I mentioned, it, you know, mission accomplished. But I will put this out there that this competes with, say, the oh so popular Twisby Echo or Eco, however you want to say it. And a little detail, like on the Twisby pens, uh, then we got white on white, but, you know, you can see this is a, a point here where the injection molding was done and they got rid of it. They smoothed it out. There's a little divot there, but they left it on the 699 and if you go through the twisby uh you don't see that stuff really anywhere everything's polished everything's refined um the plastic i know there's been issues with some people with cracking i've never had that i i, I don't know anyways um but i think there even might be a coating they put on here versus this one i'm not 100 percent sure it just this does feel like a better type of plastic i'm not a materials expert when it comes to plastic uh, where they put the o-ring for it to seal i still think this is the wrong on the eco by as a side note the wrong durometer the wrong stiffness of o-ring for this i i think that's a bit of an issue there but um yeah overall fit and finish even on the clip you can see the plating's just a little bit better on their clip versus the wing song so it does put other pens at the same price point that i feel have a little bit better refinement fit and finish um, but you can only have so many Twisby Ecos or Lamy Safaris, you get tired of those, and I think this is not too bad. I would be curious 
what would happen if they bumped the price up to 60 or 80 or maybe even $100, how good they could get this. But I would be wondering, would I get that much more refinement and quality? I, I'm not 100% certain on that, um, just on some things like that. little part in the end, that just could have been chucked into a vibratory finisher, and that would have cleaned it up. That burr getting left on there, <laughs> that just... Oh, that would keep me up at night. If I ever sent a product out the door and there was a burr on one part, I would, you know, I just hang my head in shame for the rest of my life. But anyways, all in all, a good pen. If you're wondering about it and you're wondering about this one, maybe start with this one before you shell out the cash or want a backup version to travel with, or this is just so far out of the price range. How good is this compared to the A23 or whatever you wanted to see here? Hope you got something out of that. I had fun doing this one. I wanted to kind of do, like I said, the CSI, look at the crime scene. What can we find? Found a few interesting things. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. We will catch you next time.